لا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الناس انا خلقناكم من ذكر وانثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا ان اكرمكم عند الله اتقاكم ان الله عليم خبير يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما All praise belongs to Allah we praise him we seek his guidance and his forgiveness we seek protection of Allah from the evil of our own selves and our own bad actions because whenever Allah guides no one can misguide Whenever Allah leads to go astray, no one can guide them correctly. I bear witness and testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah alone, without any partners, that Muhammad وسلم, was his servant and messenger. <clears throat> o mankind, fear your Lord who created you from a male and a female, created from the many nations and many tribes, many races, that you may get to know one another. The best amongst you in the sight of God, those are the most God consciousness. Or you believe, fear Allah and don't die except in a state of full submission to Him. Or you believe fear Allah and always speak the truth that it may improve your affairs, you may forgive your sins. Whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has surely already attained a great success. And that that's what follows. Allah said in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kunu qawwamina bil qisti shuhada'a lillah walau ala anfusikum awil walidayn. To the end of the ayah. Surah Nisa, ayah 135. Very famous verse on justice. All believers stand firm for justice. Witnesses for Allah. Even if it's against your own selves, your own parents. <coughs> To the end of the ayah. There's a famous hadith Father Prince had reported that Prophet Muhammad once was riding on his horse. And one of the companions asked him, What is the highest or best, most virtuous form of jihad? Jihad meaning struggle. The word has many different contexts. In this case, he said, The best and highest form of jihad is speaking the truth in the face of a tyrannical leader, speaking truth to power. And you can find this hadith in Sunnah Nisai 4209. It's written by Imam Nawai. So let's speak the truth. The truth is, it's been 500 plus years of colonization and post-colonialism. It's been 400 plus years of slavery and post-slavery. What we're seeing today in Palestine is not new. At the same time, it isn't thousands of years old. We want to put it into context. We want to understand what's really going on. It's been 500 plus years of colonization and post-colonialism. And what's going on in Palestine is one piece of that colonial project. And colonization wasn't just tanks in the streets and planes overhead and bombs and so on, invasions and occupations. That's the easy part. You don't need someone to stand up and give a khutbah and tell you that the tanks coming, this other country invading, they don't really like you. They don't love you. In fact, they're your enemies. You don't need a khutbah for that. It's obvious. It's clear. It's easy. If you're in Libya and it was the Italians, if it was the Spanish and the Portuguese in South America, it's the French and the British in the Middle East and the Muslim world, you don't need a khutbah for that. But colonization isn't just tanks and planes and bombs. It's also what movies are shown on the big screen, which influencers are given the algorithm boost. It's also what laws are made, who makes them, and who's forced to follow them. It's what books you and your kids are taught in school. You chose those books, you chose the curriculum, have you thought about why those books are chosen? That's also part of colonization and post-colonialism. It's the battle of hearts and minds, and they want your very souls. But we are free and full citizens of the Roman and the American Empire, and they can't enslave us, because we're already enslaved. We're slaves of Allah. What's going on in Palestine isn't a conflict. A conflict is kids arguing on the playground. That's a conflict. It also isn't a war, because since September 8th, there's almost zero Israeli citizens have been killed or have been murdered. Versus on the other side, it's been about 10,000 plus, half of them being babies and kids. That's not a war. It's attempted genocide. And although the Israeli government acts like they are the victims, what, and I saw this on Twitter, what victim has access to air, water, land, power, etc., and can turn it off in an instant? They're not the victims. Sick, sick people. May Allah guide them or else get rid of them. Say amen. amen. The Israeli leaders need to be taken to the International Criminal Court or the ICC or the ICJ the same way that leaders of the Nazi party were taken after World War II, the Nuremberg trials. If you've never heard of the Nuremberg trials, I encourage you to Google it. And if an Arab or Muslim leader commits such atrocities, we want justice for them as well. We want them to be taken to trial as well. It's not about being Jewish, or being Christian, or being Muslim, or being Arab. If it was Jordanians, or Egyptians, or Pakistanis, or Indians, or Islamic Palestinians, we would seek justice as well. 
It's not anti-Semitism, it's justice. It isn't a war, but even if it was a war, Allah, the creator of everybody in existence, me and you, from the east and the west, regardless of your religion, your creed, your background, your lifestyle, the one who created all of us, he tells us how to live our lives. He gives us absolute truth and absolute morality. And he said, war should be avoided at all costs. You hate it, he told the companions. You hate it, but sometimes you have to. When you do, there are rules. The Prophet ﷺ taught us not to kill innocent civilians, even when you're at war. You avoid war at all costs, but when you do, there's war. There are rules for war. There are laws of war. Don't kill an innocent civilian. Don't hurt a priest, a monk, or a rabbi. They're not Muslim. They're not Muslim leaders. The Prophet ﷺ taught us this. Don't destroy trees. Imagine dropping bombs that destroy entire cities. Don't kill yourself either, the Prophet ﷺ taught us. And there are over 25 others. I encourage you to Google it. The quote unquote modern world needs these rules, needs guidelines, needs guidance from the Creator. Instead, we're wasting our time telling the victims how they can or can't respond. Imagine telling Native Americans, indigenous people, in their ongoing genocide, it's been hundreds, it's been centuries. Imagine telling them how they can or can't resist to what happened to them. One of my friends is a professor of Native American studies, and he is indigenous himself. And he told me this was a few years ago. I was like, man, amazing, or unbelievable. Like, tribes were living here from coast to coast across this continent. He said, Abdullah, they're not tribes. Person, family, clan, tribe, nation. He said, entire nations living here coast to coast. It's an entire continent. And of course, there's two continents. Entire nations of people that were slaughtered. How many of them are left? How many indigenous people have you met? Texas? Multiple nations lived here in Texas. You maybe met a few of them. A few of them. Imagine telling them how to respond. Or imagine telling somebody who's whipped in the fields all day under the sun in front of their families. Those are enslaved Africans. Imagine telling them how they can or can't respond to what's going on. And by the way, it was just a few generations ago. One of my teachers, African-American imam, he's not even elderly, he's middle aged. He says he remembers as a kid speaking to his great grandparents and they told him stories of slavery and post-slavery. It's not that long ago. We like to act like we're in the 21st century, slavery, uh, racism, it doesn't exist. Yeah, it does. Absolutely does. White supremacy and racism, these things, they're not gone. We're living through colonization, post-colonialism, slavery, and post-slavery. It's not a thing of the past. It's a few generations ago. It still impacts us today. I would not tell these people how they can or can't respond. If you want to tell the victims how to respond, the question is, who are you? What are you doing with your life? On what moral authority do you stand on? Or as Malcolm X would say, that's not democracy, that's hypocrisy. May Allah have on Malcolm X. One of the most, if not the most, outspoken people of the 20th century. Definitely one of the foremost Muslim leaders, if not the most, in the 20th century. And he visited, a lot of people don't know this, he visited Gaza in 1964. And he recognized, observed, and spoke about the twin evils, European colonialism and American dollarism. He made that connection, 1964. May Allah have on him. <clears throat> we as American citizens, and I'm very proud of you to be American, Allah chose where I was born and when I was born. Nobody, interesting fact, it's attention, but nobody in human history, from the billions who have ever lived, not a single person has ever chosen where or when they were born. Something to think about. If we didn't choose it, what does that mean? So Allah chose it. I was born in Texas. A couple hours from here. I was born in Call Station, Texas, right? We're rivals. I'm an Aggie. I think I'm wearing maroon under the white coat. But anyways, I was born in Texas. Alhamdulillah, Allah chose for me to be a US citizen. I want to maximize that to the to as much as I can. And I have to study our history as well. We as American citizens, we dumped Britain's tea in the harbor. Why? No taxation without representation. It's an injustice. Fair enough. And we marched and protested and we said, tyranny, tyranny, tyranny. Now today, other people have to across the world. They want their own freedom. They want their own liberation. They want their own justice. What do we call them? See, the, our forefathers, if they had been captured by the British Empire, they were, they were killing soldiers of the crown, the British crown. They were killing the king's men. If they had been captured, what do you think they would have been called? What do you think would have happened to them? They were terrorists. They would have gotten hanged if they were lucky. Could have been worse, could have been tortured, abused. Things cut off. These are our forefathers. This is the history of America. But if you're brown or black and you're not white, it's different. If your ancestors just go back to Europe, so I understand that I'm white-skinned. If your ancestors just go back to Europe, it's not the same. It's a double standard, and that's one of the main lessons here. Some of these, some of the many concepts that we just brought up, and some of the themes seem like they don't really belong in the 21st century. And we're kind of sold on a lie. There's a lot of lessons here. The 20th century, we said, the whole world, we said, never again, never forget. Because why the 20th century had tanks and bombs and planes, occupations, invasions, apartheid, genocide, and holocaust. And now we're in the 21st century, and we're saying, hashtag never again, hashtag never forget. But guess what the 21st century has? Tanks and planes and bombs, occupations, invasions, apartheid, and holocaust. Yes or no? There's a lot of lessons here. Here's one of them. Humanity doesn't change that that much. Basic morals, principles, they don't change. So we can say it's the 21st century, like whatever that means, emotions involved. Like you can feel how you want to feel. You can use words like progressive, 
and liberal and modern and secular. Okay, but they're words. Social constructs. Look at this reality. The reality is we need truth, peace, and justice. Remember this formula. Everybody in the world, I never met anyone in my life from every background, over 100 countries, all religions, lifestyles, faiths, personalities, every type of group, every type of flag, everything. I never heard anybody that didn't say, I want more peace in the world, or the world needs more peace. Agreed? Here's a formula. It's very basic. It's not easy to achieve in real life, but simple, complicated, easy, hard. So it's hard, but simple. Does that make sense? You want peace? You can't have peace without justice. You want justice? You can't have justice without the truth. That's why footballs are very important. That's why Islamic talks are very important. That's why you being a Muslim and knowing even the basic truth about Islam and Muslims and about what's going on around the world, not just Palestine, but Kashmir and the Uyghur. You don't have to have a PhD in Islamic studies to tell people the truth. You don't have to have a PhD in social justice or a PhD in history or politics or philosophy. You don't need to do that. Do your best to champion truth wherever you go because if you want peace, you have to have justice. If you want to have justice, you have to have truth. So even saying a simple statement or a fact or a statistic or an ayah or a hadith, something absolutely true, you're directly going against the entire global narrative. You're going against the injustice globally, the entire system. It's a beautiful thing. Allah allows us to always speak the truth even when it's unpopular. And keep it strong. I, I hinted at this earlier, I want to go into this, it's important. I know many of you know this, but not everyone does. Directly goes against the narrative that we grew up with in Texas and in the news, both liberal and you know conservative. This isn't a Muslim Jewish problem. Not that there are no ayahs and hadith about al-Quds and al-Aqsa and Palestine, that's not what I mean. And there's plenty of, I mentioned one ayah, one hadith of justice, there's plenty more. That's not what I mean. But it's not a Muslim Jewish problem, like I said. Anybody who's taking anybody else's land, it's also important to us. And it's Islamic cause to defend the oppressed. It's not a Muslim Jewish problem. Also, the Jewish calendar, and I learned this a few months ago, and it's a beautiful thing. The Jewish calendar goes back 5,700 years. I have friends and and colleagues and so on that are rabbis and involved in their, in their, in their temples, all different denominations, a beautiful thing. 5,700 5, years, that goes back to who? Good prophet, Ibrahim alayhi salam. We all love and respect and admire Ibrahim alayhi salam. Our calendar goes back 1,400 years. But guess what? 1,400 years, 5,000, this conflict is 75 years old. It's not a Muslim Jewish problem. It's not because we disagree on theology, therefore we're fighting. See, see the news that we grew up with in Texas and in the US, telling us it's a Muslim Jewish problem, it's another way of saying, turn the other cheek, look the other way, ignore it, there's no solution, it's gonna be there forever. It's been there forever, you're never gonna solve it, so don't even try. You don't believe that. 75 years, and we hope inshallah it doesn't make it to 100. Hope in our lifetimes, in the next few years, if, if not even sooner, then we'll solve the problem inshallah. And the problem is a project, one little piece of European colonization. For European colonists, they can quote a few verses from the Torah, but guess what? We have groups that quote a few verses from the Quran as well. And how does the 99.9999 billion Muslims around the world, how they, or percent of the Muslims around the world, how they feel about ISIS? I don't want to speak for the Jewish community because I'm not Jewish. But we are seeing evidence from reformed, you know, liberal progressive Jewish groups and orthodox and conservative groups, both saying, not my name, I'm ashamed, they don't represent Judaism. That's not the Torah. It sounds like similar to how we felt about ISIS. We're like, you can quote a few ayahs in the Quran, we're not impressed. You don't take a PhD in Islam and say you quote a few verses in the Quran. We're not impressed. If you want to steal land and murder babies, just say you want to steal land and murder babies. Don't quote the Torah, don't quote the Bible, don't quote Jesus or Musa A.S. or don't quote Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, don't quote the companions, companions who are confident and courageous and so on, and you want to go steal, steal land and murder babies. Those who want to steal land and murder babies, that is their religion. That's not Islam, that's not Christianity, that's not Buddhism, that's not Hinduism, that's not, to the best of my, to the best of my knowledge from all these philosophies, Taoism, Jainism, rest. You want to kill land, you want to kill land. You want to steal land and murder babies, that is your religion. Don't hide behind a religion and try to get people around the world to follow you because they follow that same religion. It's a bunch of nonsense, we see through that. So Alhamdulillah, we've seen I don't know if you guys see this. I saw an entire stadium full of Orthodox Jews saying the way you think this, some of the things I said are like not politically correct, and some of this was strong language, and some of this made you uncomfortable. Go listen to this. There's a stadium full of of of, uh, of uh, Jewish rabbis speaking about how Zionism is disgusting and it's evil and God hates them, etc. Whoa, language that I wouldn't use. So it's beautiful. And then we see Reformed Jews and so on. They were arrested in D.C. and in New York and so on. And I know this last week, and I'm sure next week we're going to see even more action around the world. Some of these people are, are on the front lines more than us as Muslims and as Arabs and as Palestinians. And some of them are taking more action than us, risking their, their jobs and their time and their energy and even their lives. They want to make, make it easy. And I, I love the fact that we're seeing around the world a lot of people are questioning and curious about and want to learn more about what it means to be Palestinian, but also what it means to be Muslim from what's going on. So Allah has there's a purpose in the pain, always. I think Allah doesn't know what's going on and He doesn't know what's... He's in full control, but this is part of the, the bigger picture, uh, the bigger story. And Allah has the picture and we have the pixel. We have to trust Allah. We love Allah more than we love anyone or anything else. We fear Allah, we don't fear anyone or anything else. We put our hope and trust in Allah, not in anyone or anything else. 
because Allah is the picture and we have the pixel. Does the Jewish community deserve a homeland? I know this, some of these topics are never brought up in khutbahs, that's okay. I'm okay with that. And I've been attending khutbahs since I was a kid, including this masjid. The Jews deserve a homeland. It would be, in my humble opinion, sick, racist, bigoted, anti-Semitic to say no. Why would you say no? The Italians have Italy. The French have France. The Germans have Germany. You get the point. The Jewish community deserves at least one, if not multiple, homelands around the world, one state, where they have full access, sovereignty, independence, land, water, air, etc. Of course, international laws, and it's about everyone else as well. It's not just about you. But they deserve that. Everyone deserves that. The Palestinians deserve that as well. Deserve that as well. But when the French pick up their guns and say liberty, I don't want to say it in French. Yeah, I don't know French. I know some Spanish. I don't know French. Pick it up and say liberty, the whole world goes cheers, right? The French Revolution. We studied it. I don't know how many years ago it was. We studied it in school. Like I was in school a few years ago. We studied about the French Revolution and the Bolshevik, the, Re the revolution in Russia. We studied, of course, the American Revolution. Imagine a black or brown person, an Arab or Indian person, a Palestinian person picking up a gun and saying, "I want my freedom. I want my liberty." Their label is completely different. But of course, they deserve a homeland. The problem is how and what is going on in Palestine. And like we said, it's 5,700 years old and 1,400 years old. It's not a Muslim Jewish problem. And not only does it go back that far in this conflict to 75 years, there's more to it. It's beautiful. Every time you look into it deeper, the more you know of the facts, the more it becomes beautiful and it can rest easy knowing at least the truth is there for those who want to research it. The fact is that over this century plus, centuries plus, centuries, almost a millennia, over a millennia of them, of, uh, of the history of Muslims and Jews, is that they lived for the vast majority of it peacefully in that same land. They don't live, it's not like Muslims, Christians, and Jews have lived peacefully in America, which they do for the most part, and Spain and Europe and other parts of the world and India and under, under the, the Persians and the world. No, in that same land that we're talking about, that same area of the homeland, I know many of you know this, but not everybody knows this. If you go take a few steps this way, that way, that way, a lot of people didn't know this. They live peacefully, intermarrying, doing business together, worshiping not too far apart, living mostly in peace. So these are, these are things, these are talking points, inshallah, I know you know most of this. You can share this with your classmates, your coworkers, your neighbors, your professors and teachers. If you have the courage to do so, I encourage you to do so. Allah knows we want peace, so we're going to be glad for that at the end. It's 3 o'clock. I, I didn't ask exactly when you guys end. I'm assuming it's about 3. So we'll wrap it up, inshallah. I encourage you to, no matter what happens around the world, and it can affect your faith and your spirituality, if that's natural, if you, if you lose sleep, know that that means your heart is alive. Alhamdulillah for that. If you're having a hard time sleeping and thinking about other things. But I encourage you to focus on your relationship with Allah. How can anybody, for any reason, decide to switch or trade or exchange I want to create the entire universe in your relationship with Allah with a few clicks, a few subscribers, a few acres, a few pennies, a job, a few pennies. Don't do that. How can you exchange Allah who created everything in existence for anything else? You lose everything. Don't do it. Stay focused. And focus on family. I've already said so many things that might not be politically correct. I'll add one more. You getting married as young as possible, valuing marriage, not messing around. You're in Austin, I get it. You're at UT, I get it. Get valuing your marriage. And get married as early as soon as you can to a good person. Following Islamic values in your lifestyle and in your family as much as possible. Having kids and as many as possible and raising them well as best as possible. That's directly, not indirectly, indirectly related to what you want in Palestine. And Kashmir and the Uyghur and Yemen and Syria and Iraq and Afghanistan. We have to add to the list. Sudan, Somalia. The issues that we care about in Iran America as well. The indigenous struggle and the African American struggle. And the fact that we have thousands and thousands of homeless people in every major city in America. I can go on. There's obviously, I miss a lot of causes, but you get the point. You care about these things. You and your personal life and you're getting married, having kids, raising them up, directly relevant. It's not indirect, it's directly relevant. Or I can spend all day smoking weed and watching Netflix, stuff to you. And really as a young man like many of us, it's really that simple. It's somewhere in the middle, but for the most part you decide I want to live a life where as much as possible, I want to live a purposeful life, every day matters, I'm going to try to maximize, I'm going to do as best as I can in work and school and family and all these things and apply the deen in each of these areas of my life. Or are you going to do what most other young guys are doing in their 20s and 30s and so on, they're smoking weed and watching Netflix, or worse. May Allah keep us steadfast. Amen. Amen. <laughs> for the sake of time, inshallah, I'll wrap up. Never stop speaking the truth and fighting for justice by any and all Islamic means necessary. Allah shows the truth clearly and guides us to following it. Make us people of action and not just words. Sincere ambassadors of Islamic Muslims in this country and all over the world. Allah unite our hearts. Allow us to overcome any preconceived notion, notions, any racism, any stereotypes, spiritual diseases that, that disunite us and conquer us. Say Amen. Amen. Forgive us and our families. Allah allows us to show the, true, show the world that true freedom comes from worshipping you and none besides you, not through following our whims and our desires. Allah grants us the best in this life and the best in hereafter, protects us from the hellfire. Oh Allah, for those who are suffering, ease, ease your suffering. Those who are alone and they have nobody else, Allah be with them. Those who are sick and injured and so on, 
give them a speedy and full recovery. And those who have passed away, forgive any of their sins, have mercy on them, accept them in the highest level of Jannah. And Allah allows us to also be with them in the highest level of Jannah. Amen. Qum wa la salakum, alhamdulillah. Wa akum salat. Nasallatana ala shayal mukar. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.